Good evening again, everyone. It's great, great to be with you here at the Beach Mass. I love this. Um, I promise I won't go as long as Father Brian does. Last weekend, I, uh, I had the opportunity to travel to Cape Cod for a family reunion. I come from a big Irish family. I'm sure many of you come from those big Irish families. When we were younger, we used to do these reunions every, every, every year. Uh, and it just gets harder as everyone gets older, right? Uh, so we used to go up to East Durham. Um, if you're Irish, you know East Durham is like the Irish Alps up there. Um, this year we went to the Irish Village, which was in Cape Cod. It was just a, it was a great time together. A short weekend, but it was just really an awesome time to spend uh, time with one another. There were four generations of us there. Uh, 150 of us, I think, were there. We were still missing 60, so it was really, really, really cool. It was just a great weekend of hanging out. Uh, and eating and drinking and having great conversations uh, with each other. But, you know, one of the highlights of going to these types of places where they host these types of huge reunions is that there's live Irish music every, every night, and it's usually really awesome. And uh, if you're Irish, uh, you know this song, but they played this great, so this great Irish song uh, last weekend uh, called The Town I Love So Well by Phil Coulter. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that song. And basically, the song is about Coulter's childhood. Um, he grew up in a, a small town in County Derry, uh, which is in Northern Ireland. And the first three verses of the song speak about uh, Coulter's simple lifestyle as he was growing up. There weren't many worries. It was just a great place. Fast forward, Coulter winds up leaving that town and coming back many years later. But those many years uh, were filled with, with a lot of conflict. And so the next verse of the song is Coulter lamenting how his easygoing and serene town had become now a major military outpost, which was plagued with violence. But the final verse of the song is really, really unique. Um, he includes a message of hope. Um, I know Father Brian would probably sing it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recite the last, the last verse of the song. He says, now the music's gone, but they carry on. For their spirits been bruised and never broken. They will not forget, but their hearts are set on tomorrow and peace once again. For what's done is done, and what's won is won, and what's lost is lost and gone forever. But I can only pray for a bright, brand new day in the town I loved so well. I can only pray for a bright, brand new day in the town I loved so well. In other words, Coulter is like, looking at his hometown, he's like, I want something more of this place. It was so much more when I was a kid. My friends, don't we all have this yearning in our lives for a bright, brand new day? I'm not saying that our lives are bad by any means, but hey, maybe your life, your life right now is pretty rough. Maybe the things in your lives are not all fun and good. Maybe your town is being rocked by bombs that are killing you on the inside. Bombs of family issues, loss, depression, grief, guilt, whatever it may be. So yeah, maybe our lives here on earth are not entirely filled with darkness and doom and gloom, or maybe they are, but I think we can all still agree that we all do desire something more in life. At the depth of our beings, we are all yearning for a bright, brand new day. I had dinner with a couple, I'm gonna do their wedding in the fall, and they're a really great couple. I just had dinner uh, with them last week. And the topic of faith came up. You can't go out to dinner with a priest and not have the topic of faith come up, right? Um, they don't go to mass every single Sunday, but the future groom said something so interesting to me. He said, you know, on my worst days, when I pop into church to pray, or when I go to mass, I leave changed. I feel different. I feel like the burdens I'm struggling to carry are easier to carry when I leave there. My friends, you know what that is? It's the Eucharist. It's Jesus. The most powerful thing about the Eucharist is that it's a foretaste of heaven. It's a foretaste of everything that is to come. 
It's a foretaste of that town that we love so well already, a town that we haven't even experienced in its fullness yet. When we go to Mass or when we sit before Jesus present in the Eucharist, we go to that town where there is no more pain, where there is no more desire for something more. Just look at our readings today. We have Moses and the Israelites in our first reading. Now, they had just literally escaped Egypt. They escaped slavery. God worked a miracle for them. He, Moses parted the Red Sea. And they get to the desert, and they're walking, and they're like, Moses, we want to go back. We're hungry. These people are crazy. They just saw what God did for them. And now they're complaining and they want to go back to slavery. So what does God do? He provides them with manna. He gives them this bread from heaven. But we see later in the story of Israel that that's not good enough for them. Because what happens is that that story becomes very ugly. And Jesus has to come and rescue them once and for all. Now look at our gospel today. Look what Jesus says. He says, my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. In other words, Jesus is saying to all of us, when you come to me, when you come to this town, you're never going to want to go back to that old town. It's like the future groom, right? When you come to me, the heavy stuff that you're carrying is a lot easier to carry because I will give you the life that you need to carry it. My friends, this is why the Eucharist is essential to our lives. This is why it's so important. We should never miss Sunday Mass because the Eucharist is the most important thing that we have in our lives. It's the greatest gift that Jesus has left us with because Jesus in the Eucharist literally promises us and shows us what eternal life is all about. So my friends, what does your town look like? Are you disappointed by it? Are you burdened by it? Today, at this Eucharist, at this altar, in this place, experience through Jesus, even if it's just for a moment, the bright brand new day that your heart is yearning for in the town that you love so well already, that town that God has prepared for us all, the kingdom of heaven.